Hi, I'm Chet Sharma, and this is the Great British Chefs Signature Series. I grew up here in London, uh, spent most of my career working in two, three Michelin star restaurants. Slowly came to realize that there's a lot of complexity and a lot of intricacy to the Indian food. I think I was quite naive about that early on. Sustainability is a huge part of what we do. Kind of why, you know, using leftover bread in one of our dishes is quite important to us. You know, honestly, nothing, nothing goes to waste there. Our mission here at BB has always been about presenting Indian food in a more modern way, but retaining that sort of authentic Indian soul. I don't want people to necessarily come here just with the mentality of, I'm going for an Indian meal. It should be, hopefully, I'm going for a great meal. So I'm Chet Sharma. I'm the chef patron of BB Restaurant here in Mayfair. Today we're going to be cooking a gilt head bream papri, which is basically an Indian tostada, which was born out of wanting to use the leftover Romali roti at the end of the night. So trying to find a way to use that and obviously make it fit within the context of what we do here at BB. The complexity behind this entire dish starts and ends with the marinade. The rest of it is very, very simple and it's essentially an assembly job. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is take some lovely virgin cold pressed coconut oil and just drop it over the gas just to slowly warm up so that we can make uh, a margarine with it. So while we wait for that to heat up, um, we take the rest of our ingredients. So we start with a touch of mustard oil, very, very fresh. I mean, when you think of the flavor of English mustard, that sort of you know gets up the back of your nose. It kind of fills the same purpose as wasabi when you have a, a raw sashimi or, or sushi. And then next up, we've got a, one of our house-made chaat masalas, dried bonito, moldy fish, as well as lime leaf, a little bit of dried lemongrass, and then lots and lots of uh, ro really, really dark roasted cumin as well. Next in here, because we've got so much pungency coming from the coconut and the mustard, I'm just going to use a little bit of grapeseed oil just to lengthen the dressing. So in here, I've just added a little bit of tamarind, and I'm going to balance that with this amazing stuff, which is uh, jaggery, or gur, as we call it. And that is a completely unrefined sugar, but it doesn't taste sickly sweet, which is nice. And then I'm gonna add a semi-dried tomato. These are tomatoes that we took last year, so these are from uh, down in Sussex. Skin them, rub them with uh, a lemon oil, sugar and salt, and then we just let them dehydrate for a little while. And what they bring is, um, again, a sort of another layer of sort of round, rounded sweetness. Um, and also fruitiness to, to this dish. Just adding a little bit of lime juice. Lime juice gives the right kind of acidity that we're looking for in this dish. So I'm just gonna make a bit of noise with this uh, blender and we're just gonna get this dressing made. My coconut oil's melted down enough, so I'm just gonna, like making a mayonnaise, slowly trickle in uh, a little bit of this coconut oil. As you can see, it's kind of that French vinaigrette kind of texture. Um, still a bit of lump from the uh, tomato in there, but that's okay. First flavor that hits you should be the tamarind. And then slowly after that, you should get coconut, which is kind of a waxy fattiness rather than necessarily the, coco the flavor of coconut. And then finally, you're left with freshness from that, that mustard and from the lime juice as well. So now just to work on the garnish for the dish. Uh, so first up, there's this magical thing called a watermelon radish. So this is obviously a very pretty ingredient. It's a strange one because again, like citrus, I don't think radishes get associated with Indian food that much. Just slice it nice and thin on the mandolin and then just gonna take it down into a relatively chunky julienne. Next, I've got this guy. It's a, it's a Bombay onion. Best onion in the world. Again, no bias. These onion, onions, these Bombay onions, everybody I've introduced them to falls in love with them. So now here's the part where we take our diced gilt head bream. So filleted, prepped this morning, and then just diced and frozen very briefly. So something that I think a lot of people at home don't know about, but yeah, even the greatest sushi restaurants in the world will freeze their fish just to make sure that it's, it's super safe. A big generous pinch of salt. So taking a bit of the dressing, not too much because we just want to lightly flavor it, not coat it completely. So next we're going to take our little tostada, so bakri in Hindi. We've got this uh, mayonnaise, which is made with jalapeno juice, dried fish, and egg whites. The egg whites here give a really nice, rich silkiness without any fat. Cream is a naturally slightly oily fish as well. To have something clean uh, at the end of it and something quite almost herbaceous uh, is, a, is a really nice way to, to top this dish. So I've got my tostada. I'm just going to top it with lots of this cream. 
and I'm just going to take the nice pieces of onion out. So just top it with some finely sliced coriander, those onions as well. And the idea here is it's, it's a relatively flat dish, but try and bring you know, a little bit of height into it by using the onion and the radish. And then just because we're coming into spring and it's a very pretty dish, we use some dianthus flowers. And here is our gilt head bream pottery. <laughs>